안녕하십니까. 저는 아시안 리더즈 컨퍼런스의 사회를 맡은 변재영이라고 합니다. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is b e n j e y o n g and your MC for Track 5 of the Asian Leadership Conference 2022. Welcome, everyone. The Asian Leadership Conference is Korea's premier international conference hosted by the largest and the most influential media institution in Korea, the Joseon Ilbo. This year, our agenda is embracing the new normal, a proposal for the future. We hope to inspire younger generations and provide a valuable platform for global leaders to discuss on the agenda. Let us begin the first session of the day, how the metaverse makes knowledge a human right from Dan l e d e r s k a Chairman and CEO of EM Reality. Please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in Seoul. It's my fourth time at this event, and uh, I want to thank the organizers that always uh, welcome myself and my wife uh, to visit this. Uh, event and to have the opportunity to meet interesting people, network, and exchange exciting ideas. Uh, a lot has happened during those years that I've been visiting here, and yes, we have a new normal, uh, and it impacts our lives in many ways. My speech today will contain two elements. One of those elements is far and futuristic. And the other one is near and realistic, but I would say still quite exciting. So uh, without further ado, we will embark on this uh, short journey. Um, you know, sometimes you have ideas and you get these crazy thoughts. I should probably write a book about this. And guess what? Uh, I never thought to publish it. It was about 300 pages. And for my 6 t h y e a r birthday, my wife, she's over there. She did something that I would never do. She published it. <laughs> so there is a book here. And if you're interested in a book, there's actually some copies out there that I'm happy to, to give away. Um, so this book is about, has a bold title. Uh, it's called The Knowledge Metaverse, The Intelligence Explosion, and How We Can Become Superhumans. Actually, my original title is How We Will Become Superhumans, but my co-writer was a bit less uh, ambitious. Nevertheless, I'm not going to read the book. Uh, don't worry. But I will talk about some of these topics in this far and futuristic approach, the first part of my speech. And I'll talk about five elements, to be precise. The first element is called the intelligent explosion. The second one is describing a little bit how our brains work. The third one is the foundation of the knowledge metaverse. What is that? And the last one is the future by 2035 and beyond. Okay, so without further ado, let's go. The first one is pretty easy, uh, the intelligent explosion. So, We all know Earth started around 4.3 billion years, something like that. And the first species appeared around 2.8 billion years. Um, further on, we have to go to 2 million years ago, where the first Homo habilis, the person, the first primate that used tools. Uh, and then we have to fast forward to around 200,000 years to find Homo sapiens. That's us. and probably just 70,000 years ago when we all took this long march from Africa, savannas, and ended up in Korea, Sweden, where I am from, and many other locations, uh, United States, etc. So that's a quite a long journey. And if you follow the development of intelligence on Earth, it's a slow, slow process. And it depends on mutations, And, and it's been a little bit fast, I would say, the last 200,000 years, but still uh, not very fast. As a contrast to that, 
About 80 years ago, we invented something we all have around us, computers, right? And these computers are filling our lives. And about 30 to 40 years ago, we came up with this concept of artificial intelligence. Now, as a contrast, artificial intelligence is not slow. <laughs> it's actually super fast. So you have two types of intelligence that evolved here. One that follows Darwinistic principles, and you want one that shoots straight up like a rocket, uh, and it's artificial intelligence. The organic life, which is the slow one, uh, is filled with limitations. And I would say the artificial intelligence too, but slowly but surely gets rid of all these limitations. First, computers were good at chess, then at Go. Now I believe um, AlphaFold is uh, folding proteins. And one after the other, and it doesn't take millions of years or even decades, uh, AI is becoming faster, better, and cheaper. Uh, you know, it begs the question, and I'm not the only one asking this question, if this continues, how long does it take until we as humans are rendered useless or left behind? Or even to be more controversial, a lot of people say that the whole purpose of our existence is like caterpillars to give birth to butterflies, humans being caterpillars, butterflies being AI. That's a pretty depressing view of the future. Don't worry, I'll cheer you up today. I have some good news. I actually don't think we'll be rendered useless. I actually think AI is here to serve us, very much like a hammer or a stone or a mobile phone, we will be standing on the shoulders of these giants and we will become superhumans. That's the thesis of the book. But before we go there, we need some connection, right? We need to link ourselves to this. So first of all, we need to understand how our brain works. We have a lot of limitations, but also some wonderful capabilities. One of them is size. We can't make it bigger than it is. Another one is an expiration date. We all have limited lives. Um, but I'm even more interested to see how the brain actually works. I have a bottle of wa water here, and I'll use this as an example to explain how the brain works. All of us, I would say, when we look at this bottle, have already a spatial three-dimensional model in our brains about it. We know how it looks. We have actually the brain when actually it doesn't see anything. All the brain does is compare it with the spatial model that exists already. So there's some votes that this could be a cylinder. Not a lot of votes there. Some other votes it's a stick. Very few votes. And some of the votes in the brain says, no, this is a bottle. And once we identify it's a bottle, we know our spatial model knows a lot of stuff already. It knows, for example, that I can slightly bend it. It knows that it will be cool, even before we touch it, most likely. It knows how we can open it. We have to turn it like this and we'll say, click. All this already exists. We don't observe it. And the same applies when I found my way here to the third floor, to the fifth session. I have a spatial model, a three-dimensional model in my brain. And that is not just about the space, but also what I will find and what to expect. So we learn these spatial models since we are kids. If I would touch this bottle and it will be hot, and I try to do this and it will crack, my spatial model will be very surprised and have to adjust the spatial models. What am I getting with all this? I'm getting to the fact that the way we learn is by experience. We call it experiential learning. And we build those models, those 3D models, in our brains. And that's very important because that gives us also a clue how we should learn, how we should train. If I give you here an option, and you're going to learn how to do an emergency landing on uh, Korean airlines in water, and I give you three options. One, read a book. 
Two, watch the YouTube video. Three, go in a flight simulator and land it. Which one would you choose? And I'll repeat. Number three. And uh, why is that? No one. It's a, I will, that was a rhetorical question. Very simple. If I read a book, I'll have to think, what was it, page 14? Which button do I push first? If I see the movie, I may remember it. If I've done the simulator, I have muscle memory. I don't have to think. I'll just act. And that's the best way to learn, experiential learning. And that's what virtual augmented reality and the metaverse is about to give us knowledge in a faster, in a better, and to help us make decisions. So that's how our brain works. Now, let's go to the third element, the bridge between man and machine. So let's say if the AI goes like this when it comes to intelligence, and we go like this, we better, if you can beat them, join them, right? We should hitch that intelligence ride. The question becomes, how do we do it? Uh, a colleague in uh, Silicon Valley suggests that we should stick wires, make little holes in our brain, and stick 1,000 wires. It's called Neuralink. And the gentleman is uh, Elon Musk. I find that a little bit invasive. I don't know. I don't know about you. How many here will volunteer to do that? Not a single hand, I lay, unless perhaps I'm totally paralyzed and I have a chance to move, that probably will give me a little conviction, but far too intrusive. I do think, however, this technology in 20, 30 years will be non-invasive. So you'll just have a little band around your head and you can actually communicate with the internet and the AI directly. But unfortunately, that's not possible today. So how can we solve it? There is a way, there is a part of your brain that's exposed, that you don't have to drill holes, and that is your eyes and your ears. Those are available for us. So today, I'm gonna to talk a lot about metaverse in this device that 5.4 billion people have already. So today, it's not as let's say immersive, that's, it's gonna be thanks to our friends at Apple, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Google, that all are fighting this trillion dollar war to create glasses that we put on and have that instant ability and access to our brains. So the bridge between man and machine, in my view, will be provided in the near term, and I'm talking the next 10 to 20 years, by the metaverse, by the knowledge metaverse to be precise, supported by artificial intelligence, um, augmented and virtual reality. So that's the bridge. Okay, so now that we have that on the way, let's go to the foundation. Now, today I will show you some things that hopefully and I'm pretty sure a lot of you says, oh my God, I didn't knew that's possible. So every time, and I've been, since I was here last year, to more than 100 countries, and some of them four times. Uh, my wife jokes about it that I live on an aircraft, and she's brave enough to be with me most of the time. Uh, but I feel a bit like an evangelist back in the days. Um, I have to take people through a journey of awareness that this even exists. Most people are aware understanding of what it can do for you, and finally, belief, belief that this actually can make the difference. So I'll try to do that today in my second part of the speech. But for now, uh, to do this knowledge metaverse, we need to help people to do it. I firmly believe knowledge is a human right, and we want to make this available, accessible, and affordable for everybody on the planet. And Korea, you are an evidence of the importance of knowledge. 50 years ago, you were perhaps with Congo fighting to be number one, the poorest country on earth. Now, look at you. I'm so proud of what I see. Ambitious people, yes, fighting. 
you are the most fighting people I've met. <laughs> Every time I turn on the TV, there's some, some issue. But fighting for the good also, fighting for prosperity. Um, so I think that's, that is important, uh, and knowledge is important. Okay, so last part of my visionary speech. People ask me, okay, Dan, so tell me what's going to happen in the future. If I knew that, I would probably do something else. I don't know. So I have no clue. But you can do some, let's say, uh, some guesses. Some are pretty qualified. And I will try to make uh, five guesses or four. One is work, work of the future. Second is education. Third is space. Fourth is energy. And fifth is health. There was five. So work. We already got a little taste of that, the work of the future. Pandemic helped a lot, us a lot in that context. So what I've seen emerging, even in our company, is what I call the digital nomad. One of my smartest employees lives in Kigali, Rwanda. If someone told me 10 years ago that would be the case, I would not believe it. I thought about Rwanda and genocide, right? <laughs> uh, today, you don't have to buy a crappy apartment in Silicon Valley or London to be part of a big Silicon Valley company or even a small one like ours. You can live anywhere. And things like Zoom were the beginning, the very primitive beginning. Things like metaverse will take it to a level that it's almost indifferent where you sit side by side, other than we can do Kampai for real, <laughs> or actually uh, be in Kigali or Guatemala or Papua New Guinea. So that will be a huge equalizer. And that will make the rich, the, the journey from, rich to, from poor to rich that you took 50 years, that will enable some countries to do it in 10, 20 years, unless they have a lot of corruption and other things. So work will change. You can be anywhere. Um, education. So probably the next Einstein will come from Bangladesh, <laughs> not from Germany. Because brains, if you give them, feed them with the same type of knowledge, are equal. And the biggest population is not any longer in Europe. It's Asia and soon Africa. Nigeria will be soon, uh, give us 50, 60 years, the largest country on earth. Um, so we need f ways to, I would think, education. Uh, let's say I have a lecture at Stanford that lecture will be available not just by video, by being there with teleporting myself from Bangladesh and having a special meeting. That will change education. It will be what we call a level playing field for everybody. And I think the cost of education will also be lowered. Space, the third element. Yeah, when I start speaking by space, I'm a space geek, I'm a former, I started my career actually as a rocket scientist. I, I used to build rockets. So I joke, uh, Elon Musk went from soft to hard. He did software and then I went, I went from hard to softy, so I'm a softy now. Um, but point being that I believe that we will, within our lifetimes, at least younger folks here, a multi-planetary species. And that will change, it's pretty revolutionary after 3.8 billion years, suddenly we as life are spreading around. That's a good thing, right? Because we only have about 500 million years until the sun absorbs Earth. So we have a little window. Of course, before that, there will be meteorites, calderas, and other things that will kill us. Because I get this question, why do we need to leave Earth? If, if you want to survive as a species, you have to do it. And there's enough power and efforts and money I love the competition between China and United States and now everybody to get out there. I, that's what we are destined. We are destined for the stars. And I think space is going to be something very real. I also hope space will be a place where we produce dirty things, things that we don't want to have here on Earth, production that uh, pollutes this wonderful Earth. And that brings me to energy. What do I think about energy? Um, hmm. 
It's going to be nuclear, I hope. Uh, it's going to be uh, people, when they say nuclear, they get a little bit worried. No, it's very clean, it's very safe. It's much safer than solar. How many people fell off roofs? No. <laughs> More people fell off roofs installing a solar panel than ever died in a nuclear disaster. Uh, I think also it's going to be, of course, uh, solar-based. Totally change the way, and I think things like Ukraine conflict will fast-track the Europeans and others to find alternatives and accelerate them. Finally, health. I need to think about that. I just uh, got 60 now, and you start to think about health. And ideally, you want to not catch something and then get medicine for it. You need to be proactive. And I think there's going to be a true revolution during our or your lifetime in this context. Now, why do I talk and what has this to do in metaverse? Some people wonder by this time. Because all these things that I talked about, all of them, will be facilitated by the knowledge metaverse. It's a matter of how quickly we can absorb this new information, share it, and innovate. Okay? So with that, uh, I will end uh, my first part of the presentation before we go. The second time will be very visual, so fasten your seatbelt because it's going to go fast. But I just want to read one sentence from the end of the book, which you'll get. Um, from students to CEOs, researchers to retirees, the knowledge metaverse could impact every aspect of our lives. It will fuel our curiosity for knowledge and provide new ways to learn and train, whether it's for enjoyment, education, or employment. It will drive us to find intelligent ways to improve our lives in every imaginable facet, opening up new windows within the world as we knew it, or even creating possibilities we never conceived. It might sound cheesy, to say that the knowledge metaverse could make us superhumans, but by using it to its fullest potential, we could easily enhance our capabilities beyond our current human constraints. Maybe a cape isn't that far after all. Marvels like that last one, if I become superhuman. Okay, and now let's go to the second part. We're going to show you a lot of things that are not science fiction, that are actually possible today. Let's get going. So, let's see if the technology... Metaverse is forecasted to be a 1.5 trillion industry, so quite, quite a big one. Um, we talked about my book uh, that you're happy to, to, to receive if you're interested. We also mentioned that every morning when we wake up, we do it for a purpose. I'm not sure what your purpose is, but it has to be something exciting. In our, my case, it's knowledge being a human right and how we can make it available, accessible, and affordable. There's a lot of studies here that looks into the metaverse and XR, and that shows that people learn faster, retain information longer, and make better we have decisions. A study on virtual reality learning. We found learners in VR required less time to learn, they had higher emotional connection to the content, higher confidence, and were less distracted during the training. Learner, faster, decide better. And you can see that in many analyses that we've seen around the VR globe. So, um, if this is so good, how come not every student, every worker in Korea has it today? Why is that? Because there are problems, and there are quite a few problems. The first one that I would like to mention is that there are solutions. So game engines today are required to create these things, and game engines are very difficult to, to use. How many people know game engines here? One person. Okay. You are the minority, I need to point out. Uh, the other thing is lack of um, content, good educational content. That's a problem. The third one is lack of devices, what people perceive as necessity, which are uh, the glasses. Those are big obstacles to, to, to reach. So our commitment has been to uh, solve those issues. And how do we do that? We created, four years ago, a platform called EonXR that makes it super easy 
for my mom, she's 82, to create application in XR. She's doing cooking classes. If she can do it, and we have a lot of illiterate people in Africa that are using it. They can read and write, but they can walk and talk. And I'll show you today how you can walk and talk and create metaverse. Uh, the third aspect is we have a big library. We started with one million assets. I'm proud and pleased to say we are up to five million assets. And hopefully next year, if I'm still invited, we will probably double that at least. We also found a solution that works seamlessly in augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. So you never have to think. You create it once and you can use it many times. So we thought we kind of solved the problem with that. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Then appeared the second problem. I don't want my kids to do that. I don't know about you. This guy was several days sleeping, eating with a headset on. He has this pack and he doesn't see really what he eats. I mean, that's depressing. If this is the future, I don't want metaverse. <laughs> we need to have a future where you're not in escaping reality. We need to have a future where we embracing reality. So the next product, we had to solve this issue. So how did we do that? We created something called Merged XR. So very easily to be able to scan reality in seconds, labs, rooms, whatever. And once you do that, when you have a digital twin, use artificial intelligence. You're going to hear artificial intelligence a lot today because we are using it everywhere. To inject knowledge, remember the bottle? So the knowledge that I have to turn it, the knowledge that it can deflate, all this has to be injected in that spatial model. And we are doing it with this called Merged XR. Contextual knowledge when you need it, as you need it. So we thought that was pretty powerful. But then we went to the third problem. The third problem is that it's not fun to be alone. <laughs> Most people, you need to learn. Now, sometimes to learn alone is good because you can focus, but most time you want to test if you got it right or you get frustrated because you don't understand something. So learning together is very helpful. And ideally learning from the best. I would like to sit, if I want to learn philosophy, at Sorbonne in Paris, right? Or I want to be in Stanford or MIT to learn the latest about technology. So we do that with spatial meetings. So this solution teleports you anytime, anywhere. You have your own avatar. You can talk, you can walk. Even just having a phone, you don't have to have a headset. That's interesting because everybody in this room has a mobile phone, right? Who has not a mobile phone? Doesn't exist in Korea, it's impossible, right? Um, so with it, what you have in your pocket, you already can do everything I've shown you so far. And even the next one. So the ability to be anytime, anywhere, and communicate in a very easy way is enabled with spatial meetings and also uh, engage. Then we came to the big problem, metaverse. <laughs> because now you're not talking about individual experience or individual environments, we talk about worlds, right? That contain potentially millions of things. Now, it is very time consuming to build the metaverse. Um, the avatars need to be very realistic. Um, there needs to be a community that are... So there's a lot of problems you have to solve here. Uh, you have to load no coding, basically. So uh, I was frustrated with that, and I said, what about if you can create the metaverse just by walking and talking? I like to walk, I like to talk, but I don't do it like that. And we realized that that's not so easy, but today I'm going to show you, this is a product that was just released about two weeks ago. So you are on, among the first Koreans that will experience it. Okay, ready. So we call this solution Metaverse Builder. What it means is that it's natural world building. I use jet engines like this in a lot of my projects. And uh, you can create a lot of things. And in fact, rather than doing that, I'll, I'll show you how it works. So this was recorded two weeks ago uh, in a playroom in Portugal. So you can see the pool is to the left. I'm walking and talking. So I like engines, so I said engine. 
Immediately, the system identified from 5 million assets a couple of engines. I selected one. Then I immediately suggest text to speech, images. The system does it for me. Videos, PDFs around that engine. It creates what we call a knowledge portal. A knowledge portal can contain visuals, videos, PDFs, text-to-speech in 80 languages, including Korean. So now, going back to my bottle, I have the 3D model, but I inject contextual knowledge into it. Okay, so that's a pretty good thing. I can scale it, I can expand it, I can add multiple objects. So I want another engine, a different engine. So now I have, now I want to test the knowledge for the students, so I say quiz. So just by selecting, for example, an annotation, I can create a quiz. What's this? What type of engine is it? Identify a part, the compressor. Just click one button. Locate where the outlet or the nozzle is. Just click one button. Immediately, I built my knowledge portal. Step-by-step -step procedure. OK. Now I want to take it apart understand how the disciplinary works. I record it, and guess what? Like Gene in the bottle, an avatar appears instead of me. He's much younger, better looking, but you know, that's, that's a choice. Uh, and this avatar suddenly allows me to build this, uh, do the instruction for step by step. Now, uh, so now I'm trying to do a memo. And of course, I do it in Swedish. I select among the languages there, not Korean. And I say, hey, idag ska vi lära oss om hur, hur olika motorer fungerar i vanliga bilmotorer och andra saker. So, but if my friend in Guatemala opens this, it's going to be in Spanish. And come some idag, it will be in Korean when you open it. <laughs> so, that's uh, what you can do. What? Oh, I missed this one, but that was artificial intelligence. If I don't know what it is, I just take a picture of it. Immediately, the system identifies what it is and starts to provide knowledge. So this step-by-step, uh, -step, learn by watching, uh, watch by learning. You remember my simulator when I said land the aircraft? We can do the same with this engine. So I can record procedures and then play it back and understand how this works, the disassembly procedure. And then I'll do it myself as a student, and eventually I'm guided and test my score. So now my score says, did I do the right sequence? Did I do the right performance? How many steps were incorrect? How many steps did I miss? What did I unnecessarily steps? Like a simulator, but now for this. Now I want to put it in a context. I put it in a room, I select a classroom, Although I'm still in Portugal in a playroom, I put my items there, and suddenly I created my first metaverse room. It took me three minutes and 46 seconds to do it. I never typed anything. I only walked and talked. And I can tell you that we can do the same to build a big metaverse, not just a room. So that's walking and talking. Now I can also record it, put it on social media, uh, I can uh, generate the video on the fly so other friends can, can join me in this venture. So this way, you can do a lot of stuff. Everything you see here, I did it in the last week using this. So I created everything you see in this video. And this is probably 5% of I, what I played with. And keep in mind, I don't do this more than maybe 10% of my time. Again? So um, nice that's you. my wife in a and church somewhere with our friends from one friend is from China. Uh, hi. That's Richie. How are you? Uh, hi. We are in the metaverse yeah. in a church uh, in a mixed reality environment. Oh, there he is. That's hi, a Josh. football player. I was in Qatar. FIFA, FIFA like football. How many FIFA fans here? Richie. So FIFA wants um, us to do I this. Say, so you I see the football player there. The uh, that's a plumbing I application. Yeah. I, I had to learn about plumbing People because they are leaking pipes. Uh, <laughs> the swimming pool, some kids don't want to go to school, they want to be in swimming pool. So I found out a way how to teach them biology <laughs> by so being by the pool, swimming pool. Um, how about architecture? I did architecture on the patio uh, and I entered rooms that were quite interesting. Um, heart, I was in a hotel, I think in Kuwait, and I had to learn about anatomy 
So I did it pretty fast there into my room. Um, I love the British Museum, so I had a chance to take all the artifacts from British Museum to me. So that's good. Now let's talk about the real metaverse, a whole world now. So we just recently launched with our friends in Thailand, Infinite Land. This is the land of education through collaboration. It's a decentralized community platform where creative minds can gather, express, and exchange innovative ideas. And um, again, I created the metaverse for this myself, <laughs> my own part of the metaverse. And now I'm going to show you how I buy land using different technology and how I experience that. So let's go. Uh, so we call it Infinite Land, and we want to do an Infinite Land or a Metaverse Land here in Korea. So if any people are interested, contact me after this. So first you select, you buy your land, you select your buildings, your rooms. We have tons of them. You can build your own. You select your Thai avatar, your English avatar, your French avatar. I build about 30. It takes about 45 seconds to build an avatar. Arabic, Chinese Nihon. Uh, hola, Zdrasvitya. I enter Hi. my room. Hi, Brock. What's up? So I invite one friend to yeah. this room. The I can have old, six, seven, twenty, thirty friends, old, uh, and we all meet in this. I, 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 I invited them to a Swedish place. Now I want to populate it with lessons, museums, paintings, uh, to make it more exciting. And I want to learn about physics, chemistry, geology, anatomy, space engineering, cosmology, archaeology. Geology, oh, agriculture, <laughs> why not mining, medical equipment, dentistry, carpentry, electronics, plumbing, welding. Really nice. yeah, that's, so that's, uh, mention it, we have it. And now yeah, I want to explore the room. So I'm physically holding my phone yeah, like this can, uh, and I'm walking around. We'll go through this um, and I can go in portals. We think portals are like links. So now I'm actually, he's in California, you can see that. He's in Laguna Beach. But then when I penetrate the wall, boom, I'm in France. Oh, that's cool. In some type of uh, graffiti world. And guess what? I'm meeting a friend from Korea <laughs> uh, and a friend from China. And they happen to be in France, but in the end of the tunnel, you can see California. So it beats a little bit confusing. <laughs> Where am I? With Avatar, you can also ask the question, who am I? So I was here outside yesterday. You can see this is uh, Sheila Hotel. Um, I, I was at the tax-free zone. Um, this is still in the pool. I got the... This is shopping at Harrods in London. Uh, I was shopping perfume with my wife, so I have a guided Avatar tour at the Royal Albert Hall. This is the Natural History Museum. This whale does not exist there, but it exists persistently tracked in our app. <laughs> uh, so we are tracking those things in real life. So think about being a poor student at the university in Korea. And you can only afford a beanie bag, no table, no couch, no paintings, no nothing. Without this technology, you can have persistently tracked Mona Lisa wall painting. Thursdays is Hawaii night. <laughs> so the whole room changes. Uh, today I use my phone, but if I have a headset, uh, I use that. So this is the metaverse, right? This is the metaverse. And of course, it can help you with learning in many different things. Archaeology. I just pick things that interest me, like archaeology or space engineering or cosmetology. That's not my interest. My, my wife is a little bit interested in that. Art and paintings or uh, you know, what have you. Uh, all these aspects are now covered. So in Korea, you have, you are very good at technical vocation training. We cover all this. Or uh, fine arts, or health science. Okay, so let's summarize. What can you do in the metaverse, knowledge metaverse? You can learn. You can either get uh, your library items, 5.1 million uh, items, which hopefully next time will be 10. You can scan your environments. You can import your CAD data or data in general. You can take pictures using artificial intelligence inside the application. 
uh, to recognize what you're looking at. You can have knowledge portal that contains information. You can have assessment portals that very validates the knowledge of the students. You can walk and talk to create or experience. That's on a beach in Thailand. That's my next stop. It's not Thailand, actually, it's Indonesia in Bali for a month. So uh, you need to do that. Then avatar instructions for and also assessment to assess if someone is doing the right stuff. Uh, and finally, collaboration, the ability to be with other people in different environments. Learn, train, perform, collaborate. Okay, so if we talk about education, where can you use this uh, technology? You can use it in elementary school. That example you see there is in France. Uh, kids, this is before pandemic. Um, the other example you see there is in Vietnam, where tens of thousands of students are using this today. Today. They are, so I was thinking, if there's so many students using the metaverse on a daily basis, how come Korea doesn't do it? You guys are number one in many things. Definitely the fastest one. So I haven't seen as much in Korea yet, but I'm happy to expand that. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have other areas like technical vocational training. Uh, you can see the lady gets CPR there. No country or school can afford to buy all the MRI devices, all the CNC machines, all the engines. An engine costs $42 million. So that's not possible. You definitely cannot buy the particle accelerator in CERN, <laughs> but we have it. So the ability to have all this at your fingertips anytime, anywhere for K-12, for TVET, for higher education, um, for hospital experience, for uh, factory environments, um, it's endless. All we need is brains and energy to inject the knowledge and own that own knowledge. That knowledge should be owned by Koreans. Your own knowledge, not hijacked by others. Okay. So, I'm trying to get through all this. There you go. Now, there's much more information here, which I don't want to bore you with, but what you saw working here on the phone works also on Oculus, work also on all any 30 devices. Uh, you also have a back end if you want to track your students and see how they are doing. Now, this is used for academia, but it's also used by industry. So, in industry, we've seen a 63% to 92% reduction in training costs. So, companies like Boeing, Airbus, Exxon, Caterpillar, Shell, even are using this technology today to reduce training cost and increase productivity. Using AR, Boeing was able to increase productivity uh, by 25% and reduce the wiring time with 40%. So, the good news, we are not alone. Uh, two or three years ago, there were about 25 countries that implemented this fully nationally. We are now more than 100 countries. I was here in July 2021, that's me there uh, in the room. And since then, we've seen a dramatic growth during the pandemic, 800%, 800%. Now, which industry do you see 800%? It took me 23 years to reach 800%. It used to be 10%, 15%. So, everybody's joining the party throughout the world. Of course, America started. Uh, we started in, during the pandemic with LACC, for example. This is Los Angeles Community College uh, for nurse training, automobile training. Uh, even Mississippi, places that normally are not associated with high tech are using this. Um, Colleges are uh, even more use, using this than, for example, universities. Um, Canada follows suit not long after. Um, of course, we have even places like Morocco. Ministers now joining this. We started in Morocco with 60,000 users. We are now going to 600,000 users, and it's becoming national. India is very fast. 
India, it's a big competition, I would say, to China. We started there with 40,000 students, and the president endorsed it. We also had a big honor, this is two weeks ago, the Prime Minister of uh, Thailand is inaugurating the Infinity Land. Uh, the, the Minister of Education is rolling this out through the universities. Uh, we just signed another agreement for 50,000 users in Thailand. Mexico is doing this. Even small places like Jamaica so are using this because they are on the islands. Honduras, Panama, Dominican Republic, London, East London University. The Scottish are doing it, the Swiss. So I can go on and go on, I don't want to bore you from, but everywhere, even places like Romania. Singapore, Singapore is the lead, I would say. They started with this 10, 15 years ago. More than 80% of the schools are using it today. That's a lot. China. China started about six years ago, and they are perhaps the most aggressive ones. And uh, we collaborate actually very well with China. Most people are a little bit afraid of China because of IP, intellectual properties, but we have a very good experience there. Vietnam. Cambodia. This is the Minister of Education, Cambodia. Uh, Indonesia. South Africa. And so on and so on. Even places like Africa now. This is the Minister of Education in Ethiopia that's rolling this out. They can't afford to do it the normal way. Okay, and this is actually last week. Here's the Deputy Prime Minister of Kuwait. Of course, they have a lot of money now because of the oil. <laughs> so so uh, he invited me in sofa and his room was much bigger than the White House, the Oval Room, I would say. It was interesting. He's also Minister of Oil, Minister of Electricity, Water, Renewable Energy, and now they are doing national rollouts. So it's very exciting to, to, to work with them. Uh, so I'll stop with this and ask why are we doing this? We are now instituting grants. So Korea has access to a grant that we can invest up to 150 million US dollars. 150 million dollars to do national rollouts. Now, why would we do that? First of all, we have a non-profit called um, uh, Learn for Life that my wife is leading uh, and uh, donates together with other non-profit organizations this type of technology. The other thing is we cannot build the metaverse. The metaverse has to be built by you. We can help you, but you need to own it and you need to control it. Very important. Um, so those are some of the reasons. Now, what's in it for partners here? Uh, we don't have time to listen to their voices, but they are speaking loudly from across the world. And it sounds a little bit muffled, but there they are. Um, so what's in it for you? What would be the benefit by working together and taking advantage of the grant? I would say a couple of things. Number one. It will help to transform knowledge transfer. Workers, students can learn faster, retain information longer, make better decisions. Two, it will enhance the educational quality. We've seen a huge difference between, uh, let's say, schools that are using normal technology like uh, Zoom or uh, this type of e-learning or classroom versus the ones that are using this type of experiential learning. Students are more engaged, more interested. Uh, more, how shall I say, retain more information uh, and much more happier by using this. The third reason is you need to build your own IP, your Korean IP. I meet so many people say, oh, we need to do digital transformation. But how do you do it? This is a way. I'm not saying it's the only way, but it's a way. And last, you can get a return on investment. The best benefit for you to join us, if you think about money, is to join because if you can create content, Korean content, we have 42 million users, like an eBay for learning, where you can publish it and the sales revenue goes to you, 70%. So this is a way for you to, Korea that's so famous for many areas, such as, for example, technical vocation training, to use the marketplace, Eon Marketplace, to publish it. So we are willing to help. 
The grant I was talking about is not in cash, it's in infrastructure, platforms, hardware, know-how required in order to make this happen. Okay, so contact me if you are interested. If you are a university, we can talk about how to do this. If you are an academic institution, if you're a government or a company, we have solutions. Last but not least, I want to talk two minutes about, uh, one minute about the Metaverse Academy. This is the expansion of jobs in the Metaverse. You can see it's an exponential curve. We need to recruit smart people in this area. So if you're interested, let me know. And nice thing about it, they are quite well paid. An administrator can make $95,000 a developer can make $125,000. Now, if you live in Rwanda, <laughs> it's a very good salary. But even in Korea, I think it's not a bad salary. And you can see here, those are people that are working for us. Uh, the gentleman to the left is from Senegal. The lady is from Rwanda. Uh, the gentleman there is from New Jersey. The, the, other, the third lady there is from uh, uh, Colombia, Pakistan, Sweden. Digital nomads. Digital nomads. Now, to help all this, I was very proud early this year that we were introduced on NASDAQ uh, at a valuation of $655 million. As you know, the technology is going up and down all the time, but we also raised another $100 million in cash so we can continue our rapid expansion. And that also enabled us to provide more support for the grants programs. Okay. So, you can see some example. The first one is from Singapore. The second one is how this is deployed in different governments around the globe. And with that, I have three minutes left, I think, and three seconds. And I want to thank you. You've been a very good audience. I can see in your eyes that uh, you are responding positively. Um, if there is any questions, I have about two minutes and 52 seconds to, to see if I can answer them. If not, thank you so much. As you say in Korea, kam samida. And I look. And thank you so much for our host. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Dan Ledger Scarf, for sharing your precious time with us. Now, this marks the end of the first session. We will have a short break and rearrange the stage. The next session will begin at 12 30 p.m. Thank you for. Thank you for your time.